So what I exactly do? Everybody is like, what are you doing? What is it exactly like? You just make a coffee. What is the big deal out of it? In fact, there was somebody who just asked me like, didn't your parents say something about it? Like, you know, what is it like? You know, and especially you quit your CA and then got into coffee. So, uh, okay, first of all, who all have had, the, had this with the show of hands? Espresso, okay, and espresso? <laughs> espresso, all right. So the point of me just making this out is like, espresso, it's being used, espresso, espresso. It's not espresso, it's espresso, all right? Uh, so coffee has been taken like quite lightly. It's like, you know, our everyday drink and all those things. But to be serious, uh, it's quite a bit of science. When I got into coffee, yeah, uh, I never understood chemistry, to be honest, CO2, H2, and all that, I don't know. But when I got into coffee, it made more sense. I started reading about chemistry. I started reading about physics. The point I want to make is when you do something that you really like, you don't really care about if it is chemistry, physics, science, bio, maths. It must be anything. But you start relating stuff to it. So I started reading chemistry and it just made sense. So coffee for everybody is like, as you said, like a morning thing, you know? For me, morning thing is chai, to be honest. But uh, coffee is something which has got a lot of research, a lot of education in it, and a lot of science chemistry in it. So yeah, I started working behind the machine for a long time, became a coffee roaster. Coffee is not just a beverage now. It's the second largest, most rather traded commodity in the world. So, I mean, legally, but second most largest uh, traded commodity. And I was just reading up the facts, like America in itself consumes 40 million cups of coffee per day. And the Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries, they consume seven kgs per person per annum. In India, it is just 70 grams. So there's a huge difference, of course, because of the climate and all those things. But India, it was 40 earlier. It's 70 now, so it's growing. Coffee also is not just a beverage. It's now improve, increasing a lot of technological aspects in it. A lot of photographers are coming into it. A lot of brand people are coming in. Everything is coming kind of a community table. You know, coffee is kind of a community table. So when you get into coffee, there are a lot of variables. Uh, a type of strong black. This is what you get on the internet. And as you said, uh, internet is one source where I first say, like, you know what? if you're talking to me with an internet source, rather not talk to me, you know? Because his water is different, his coffee is different, his environment is different, everything is different. Don't go by his palate. His palate and my palate is different. Don't go by that. If you have experienced it, that's a different thing. But this is what it says. A type of strong black made of forcing steam. I mean, they don't force steam out of it. It's a water, so this is like technically wrong, all right? So when you go into the depth of coffee, it's got these variables that, I mean, these are just some of the variables like species, varietals, location, processing, how it was roasted, when it was roasted, who roasted it, and what graphs, and all these things. So there is a lot of mathematics, a lot of science, a lot of tasting in it, and it becomes really interesting after a point of time. So there's also one more thing that I want to address. Like in coffee, the, you, you must have heard of a coffee snob, right? Coffee snob. Uh, have, has anybody heard a wine snob? I mean, wine connoisseur, all right, but not a wine snob. Coffee snob, not a coffee connoisseur, why? You know, that's the point that I want to make. Like, coffee in itself is, you can be a coffee taster. You, it, it is a serious profession. Why do you want to say it's a coffee snob? But, I mean, of course, if it's an instant coffee or something, that becomes like something different. Instant is something completely different. We are into the specialty zone where we roast, we source the coffee directly from the farmers, and we are working directly with Indian farmers. So we get the green beans, roasted only on orders, and then supply it everywhere. So instant is a completely different ball game. But anyway, your, the taste of coffee changes with all these parameters. Even if, let's say, location. Everybody's got an estate of coffee, all right? My location is X, your location is Y. The taste will be different altogether because the soil is different, the altitude is different, moisture is different, everything is different. So all these parameters people kind of ignore and they're like, yeah, coffee hi hai, peena hi hai, so I don't really care about it, you know. But yeah, these things matter a lot. Now, let me speak about the Indian coffee. Indian coffee farmers are like really working hard. In India is like the top six coffee growing nations in the world. And 90 or 85 percent of the coffee is exported. And the coffee that remains is the coffee that 
is not that great, but that's what we are trying to do. Why are you exporting? We want to have that coffee. In everybody is like, okay, Ethiopian coffee is beautiful. Colombian coffee is good. Indian coffee is mind blowing. We just had some coffee a while back. That was Indian coffee, purely Indian coffee. It had nothing in it, just Arabica coffee. So Indian, my bad. Indian coffee is handpicked. Anybody who's gone to Chikmangalore, you should just, if you haven't, you should definitely go there. It's handpicked and it's very difficult to handpick because the terrains are very difficult. The machines do not go inside. So it's all handpicked and the laborers are working and struggling pretty hard. So rather than going for a commercial grade, I think specialty is something which is like encouraging a lot of farmers to do something really good. Like there are a few farmers that I know, they've given the farmers a wristband which is red in color. The red is the ripe cherry which we want, the green is the unripe cherry. So they've given the red, uh, red band so that they at least have a connection that okay, you want to pick the red cherry and you get an incentive towards it. That's something which is like pretty cool. So Indian farmers, they used to get the money way later after the harvesting is done, which is like at least five years later on. And they really didn't know where the connection is, where their coffee is going, they didn't have a feedback. So specialty market is moving towards like, I call up a farmer and say, you know what, uh, your coffee is brilliant, what did you change? So you're like, hey, you know what, we changed the water, let's do this forever. And you're like, cool, let's do it. So that's how it happens. So this is a roasting machine. Coffee is earlier is red in color. It's processed in various ways. And the point of uh, processing is to get the green beans from it. Uh, the, you can wash it, you can, I mean, the red cherries are washed, it can be pulped sun dried. And the point is to get the green beans and then it is roasted. Once it is roasted, you must have seen the brown coffee, everybody, right? So that's what happens. This is a roasting machine that we have. You dump in the coffee above and you got to monitor it continuously. This is one of the graphs, all right? It looks like a spacecraft or I don't know what all, but this is the roasting graph that you have to monitor every now and then. So if you've got 50 coffees, every batch is going to taste different. Every processing is different. The he this is kind of a heat graph. Let's call it a heat graph. So you have to calculate every 15 seconds and see, do you want to increase the heat? Do you want to reduce the heat? And then you got to taste it. So Tasting is something which is very important. Coffee is full of flavors and aromas and everything. You enter a roastery, you'll be like, give me a tent, I'm gonna stay here. You know, it's beautiful, it's just amazing. So it's the whole life of a Q grader is about tasting coffees. But at the same time, you taste some horrible coffees as well. So it's not like something very fancy and all that. And this machine gets super heated up. It's like 230 degrees Celsius inside. And if you're in regions of, let's say Nagpur or Delhi, you know what I'm talking about. So it's a very beautiful life, but of course there's a lot of hard work behind it like every other profession has. The thing that is happening right now everywhere is like, it's a cool thing, wow, you know. So coffee, you will find a lot of hipsters in coffee. A lot of hipsters, a lot of tattoos and a lot of long hair, dreadlocks and all that. Uh, but when they come to their coffee zone, they are like at it completely, they'll be like, Bomb blast here, bomb blast there, we don't care, this is our coffee, this is our zone, you know. So there are a lot of professionals who are taking up a coffee job, be a roaster, be a Q grader, be a barista, be a, I don't know what all. They're pretty serious about it. So it is a lot of hard work behind the machine and the quality control and all these things, but it's something very amazing. Some, anybody who's interested in coffee, just come up, just come up, just leave everything that you're doing and you should just, uh, I mean, take up the thing. Q grading, uh, in the introduction I, they said that I'm a Q grader. Now Q stands for quality. It is an exam where, it's an exam where there are 22 tests, it's an exam, it's not a course or something. And I did it in Melbourne, in those five days, I cupped, rather tasted, 780 coffees. And it was like, uh, okay, before, the preparation for Q grading, it started three, three and a half, two and a half years back. And before the exam, before the exam, that was 13th of May, for three weeks, I ate absolutely nothing, just hummus and pita bread. So that helped my weight as well. But uh, the point of not eating that was, uh, I wanted to keep my palate really sensitive. So if there are any, what do you call, defects, any flaws in the coffee, I just get it right away. That exam is super tough. It's conducted under red lights because they don't want you to see anything, uh, any visual uh, clues or whatsoever. And uh, 
Yeah, so the passing percentage is almost like CA, like 2%, 3%, you know. So hardly 2 or 3% pass this exam. And after I clear that exam, I'm like, give me some tea. I don't want some coffee, you know. <laughs> give me some tea, you know. So you, get, you really get tired. What you have to do is you've got to sip the coffee and you have to score it and judge it. The point of Q grading is if I'm standing over here, I get a call from, let's say, Germany, and he says, you know what, Mithilesh, I want a coffee of 82.75. I exactly know what he's saying. I exactly know that. So I translate that into coffee and I send it to him. It also uh, gives a good opportunity for the farmers to understand what their quality is all about. So we give them a scoring, we give them a whole sheet, and they're like, cool. Any coffee scoring 80 above is specialty, below 80 is commercial. So they get the good money out of it. Uh, as I was saying, that coffee is not really a cool stuff. You actually sometimes taste these coffees and it's almost like a rubber sole or uh, I don't know what all, it's rubbish. Yeah, there must be questions, have I tasted rubber sole? I have. So it does taste really bad. It does taste some coffees are very defective. Championships, let me speak about championship. So this is my Aeropress championship trophy, not the car, the trophy, I wish. So this is the trophy actually. Uh, so there are a lot of championships in coffee, yeah, it is. And it's about brewing, it's about roasting, it's about tasting, there are a lot of championships. The point is these guys are trying to make is, look, coffee is a beverage cool, but it's a very serious thing as well, you know? Like, economically, if you see, we get a lot of economic boom, you get a lot of employment out of it, and of course, the quality of coffee goes up. Like in this championship, what happened was, every com competitor was given one set of coffee, and you gotta brew the best beverage, but, so as I, was telling you earlier, everybody, that we are making our own water back in our cafe. We want to make the best cafe, best water, because water has got some solubles which you don't want, and some insolubles, so it should be matching with the coffee properly. So in the championship, people are having their own water, their own set of gadgets and all, and you have to get, make the best brew. The judges will be judging it, tasting it, and telling you who's the winner. So this has started in India, which is really good. This was the first Indian Aeropress Championships. And uh, it's just going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling. India is like the next big market. Australia is almost saturated. US is also saturated. But India is like everybody's looking over here. Because we've got the roasters. We've got the producers. We've got professionals in coffee. And everybody is like so helpful. Coffee community is something where contract don't, doesn't work as such. It's uh, a farmer told me like, I don't believe in contracts. I believe on spit on the hand and a handshake. You know. It's that kind of a feeling. And trust me, it is something which is like, you leave all the corporate things aside and you're like, let's have some coffee, let's have some beer. That, it's that, that pretty good. So the Indian community, I run a brand called Corridor 7. Over there, uh, the support that I have been getting is incredible. It's connected by, I mean, we didn't go out looking out for people and all, but people started coming in. They're like, you know what? We want to learn. We want to learn about this. So. The thing that I faced earlier, three years back, where I had to go outside, you know, uh, what coffee is, to scratch every itch of it, like, what do I have to learn, what do I have to know? We're trying to get this in India, and it's been a good response. There are a lot of, lot of people who are really interested into it. Uh, there are photographers, there are artists who are making artists from used coffee, you know, uh, paintings from used coffee. So you always get a support system. So if anybody wants to start something, be it coffee, be it making, I don't know what all, as everybody had said earlier, just go for it. Because if your passion is pretty true, if your love for the product is pretty true, and you know what you want to do, you will find a support. There will be not a single moment where you are alone. And especially in India, you'll get a super support, I'm sure about it. It's important to have weighing scale because as you said, the variables in coffee, cookie. You need some proportions, right? So like grams, 20 grams, 30 grams, 40 grams. Same for coffee. Uh, so this is the weighing scale. It's not that cool. Uh, my weighing scale broke, anyway. So this is the weighing scale that we have right now. And I just cleaned the paper filter.
So next time when you buy a coffee, make sure that you see what is written on the packet. If it is written like best before, that means they don't want to want you to know when it was roasted. Coffee is fresh for the first one to three weeks, you know, after roasting. It becomes a perishable product once it's roasted. Just imagine like wheat. Once you cook it, you gotta eat the biryani soon. Usually it gets over though. So we're taking 25 grams, 26 grams of coffee. So you just pour water on top. This is called a pour over. And uh, you gotta pour water on top of it. While you do it, you think about life. <laughs> what are you up to? What do you wanna do in life? Where you are at? Don't think about the bank balance and all. <laughs> It'll be messed up. Okay, the coffee is ready. 